What's going on everybody and welcome back to the channel. It's been about a month since my last video and a lot has changed in my life. Two weeks ago, I adopted a dog named Boomy and I've been spending a lot of my time helping him adjust to his new lifestyle. Because of that, I haven't had a lot of time to edit videos, but things have started to settle down a bit and I'm ready to get back to my normal schedule. Over the past month though, I have still been working on my projects and I'm gonna use this video to share some updates on the various things I've been working on. I know a lot of my previous videos have been centered around specific topics, but I just wanna take this video to just provide some updates. Not everything I work on is so focused on delving deep into a particular topic or concept. Sometimes I'm just working on getting things done and I hope my videos can reflect that. Since my last video, I've made some progress on my game engine. In full transparency, it hasn't been that much of a focus for me, but I still got some things done. I mentioned in my last video that game engines like Unity abstract or conceal a lot of lower level graphics and physics programming. In programming, abstraction can be done through creating classes. Classes are a means of defining objects that have specific properties and functions. For example, in the spirit of me getting a dog, let's define a sample dog class. The properties of the class may include things like breed, age, size, or color. And the class functions or methods would include things like eat, sleep, bark, sit, whatever you want. With classes defined, we really don't have to worry about the contents of the methods inside the class. We simply need to know what each function does and how it might change the internal properties of the class object. Within my game engine, I created an object class. To create an object in my game engine, you would just have to provide a set of vertices. With the vertex information, the class would create the buffer objects and array objects necessary to render whatever object you're making onto the screen. This made creating cubes and other meshes a lot simpler. From here, I also created three more classes. With the game class, you would just have to pass the window size and it would set up the context for OpenGL to run in. With the texture class I made, you would just have to pass the file path of the image you wanted to use. With my shader class, you would just have to pass the file paths of the fragment shader file and the vertex shader file. These four classes I made handle all of the relevant OpenGL code. I have a lot more abstraction to do, but I've made a step in the right direction. Another project that I've been focused on is an app that I'm developing with my friend Shurjan. He's the one who's made the music for my videos as well, so be sure to check him out on Spotify. This app has really been a long time coming, and it started as a game we would just play with our friends at school. The app is essentially going to be a game where you submit a song for a given category and a judge decides the winner. It functions pretty similar to Apples to Apples or Cards Against Humanity if you've played those games. Neither of us had any mobile development experience, so we decided to take a React Native course on Udemy. It really helped us to understand how to render different screens, components, and how data moves around a React Native application. To get music into our application, we decided to use the Spotify API. An API is an application programming interface. Basically, it's a set of functions to get data from somewhere or to post data to somewhere. With the Spotify API, you can query for different songs and artists and albums and even play them back in your application. To do that though, I had to set up Spotify authorization. To authorize with Spotify, the user has to log into their Spotify account and grant your application permissions. As the developer, you can really set these permissions to whatever you need to use from their account. In our case, we just want to read user playlists so they can access them within our application. Once the user grants our app permissions to their Spotify account, the server redirects them back to our application and gives them an access token for using the other APIs. The whole authorization and token refresh process was a bit of a pain to set up and required a lot of server development, but it was pretty rewarding and taught me a lot. With the token, we could access some of the more fun Spotify APIs. To submit songs for a particular round, users would have to be able to search Spotify. So I used the search API to do that. Each search would return a list of tracks relevant to the search term provided. With each track, the search API also returned a preview URL for each song. I ended up using this URL to add some song playback features within the application. Eventually, I do want to build out this screen to allow users to search through their playlists as well. Exploring the Spotify API and building out this application has been a whole lot of fun, and I'm looking forward to sharing its development in the future. The third project that I'm working on is a new multiplayer game that I hope to eventually put out on Steam. I don't want to say too much about what the game really is because it's still kind of shaping up in my head and I'm not sure how it's going to work, but it does involve spaceships and it seems like it'll be pretty cool. My experience with multiplayer development so far has come from recreating Among Us. The game worked pretty well, but the server was a bit buggy. 
Considering that I want to create a working prototype within a few months, I've decided to develop this game with a pre-existing server architecture. For my game, I've decided to use Photon, which offers a cloud for hosting my game server and an SDK or software development kit for interacting with it. I haven't made a ton of good progress on my game yet, but I have made a lot of good progress in learning how to use Photon. I walked through a simple tutorial on how to connect players to lobbies and then from there connect players to different rooms and synchronize things like player movement and player health. After creating this game, I felt like I at least had a basic understanding of how networking worked in Photon. From here, I've added on to and modified this game to meet my specific needs for my game that I want to make. But I hope to go into that in future videos. I know this was kind of a mashup of a bunch of different projects, but sometimes that's what my work is like. It's not always going to be super focused or polished, but I'm excited to share everything with you either way. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Slow it down to a medium groove.